Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack for the third video in the series of um, reviewing my receivers. I started with the portables, then desktop, now SDR. And this was actually requested by several of you. Uh, happy to oblige. Um, it was SDR actually that got me actually got me back into the hobby because it was the summer of 2015. I sat in the garden watching YouTube videos um, of some guy um, recording transatlantic medium wave DX signals using an SDR. I think he was actually using a Perseus, which I have owned previously. And um, what I can say about that is that it just seemed so great to be able to observe the signal as you're listening to it. As I was watching those videos, that kind of inspired me. And uh, I took the easy option, which was I bought a cheap Texan receiver the pl360 but loved it and then um and that really got me back into the hobby seven years ago um i did eventually buy an sdr a few months down the line and that was this the new elec rtl sdr the r820 t2 um i bought it from amazon about 20 or 30 quid um cheap as chips um originally designed to tune for 25 megahertz i think to 1.75 gigahertz obviously you need the up converter which new elect provide as a uh, as a little project uh ham it up um to allow it to be used on the hf bands and um this is really good actually because it, it introduces almost no additional noise uh it has a very low insertion loss and allows the new elect to be used um on shortwave etc i think i originally used this with my mac cube sdr rings a bell Sort of impressed with it in terms of being able to actually observe the signals I'm listening to. I can remember copying All India Radio and thinking that was kind of okay. I can remember trying to tune in Radio Clube de Para on 4885 kilohertz and thinking the sensitivity of this is not actually that great. Um, but it was still a bit of a buzz um, uh, being able to actually look at the signals as I, as I was listening to them. So that was probably late summer, early autumn 2015. Um, but because by then I was into transatlantic medium wave DX using my mostly FR, mostly using my FRG eighty eight hundred, and inspired by Mateus, a San Diego a YouTube channel, although he hasn't posted for a long time, he had a an ELAD SDR, FDM, whichever one it was, uh, and was producing some really great DX results. And me being more of a traditionalist, wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted a front panel, so I bought. Uh, an FDM uh, duo, which you can see here is the red receiver. And I bought this at Christmas 2015. It was £800, I think, or £800 something pounds. So, right at the other end of the spectrum, no pun intended, than the new Alec. Uh, and I bought it primarily for medium wave DXing, transatlantic, and used this radio for years. Copied many, many North, North American stations on medium wave, South American. Um, Produce, there's probably thousands of videos on my channel using this receiver. Um, in fact, you can. Some of you will be familiar with this anyway, but that's basically the uh, software uh, FDM SW2. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was the second SDR I owned. And uh, although expensive, 800 has its own built-in speaker, although it's a bit thin. Um, you know, 800 pounds plus today seven years later is a lot of money to spend on a radio seven years ago it was a very large amount of money to spend and um but i'd never regretted it and it transformed how easy uh it was to then record uh stations dx etc you can it has a record function so you can set limits on a spectrum bandwidth and it will record those signals and you can play them back afterwards and try and figure out you know the ids and you can then use software to uh to capture those sections of the recordings and post them on youtube so um still sold today this is mine is the five watt qrp transceiver version um they're more expensive now but i still rate this this sdr as one of the best rigs for transatlantic medium wave dx and um yeah, it's been incredible radio and I, I would never get rid of it. Um, in in the meantime, um, I a friend of mine sold me a Perseus 
uh, by Micro Telecom, and that was superb. The equal of the ELAD, probably even more sensitive than the ELAD. The only limit with it for me was the software. Um, I had one of the original versions of the software and you had to pay extra, I think, even to get it to do something as simple as it expand into a sort of full window. Um, so although fundamentally the performance of the Perseus was absolutely superb and still remains one of the best, if not the most sensitive uh, SDR ever made, um, I used mine for one or two years or three maybe and then and sold it on. Um, so a per the Perse Micro Telecom Perseus is absolutely superb SDR. And I think now the ELAD now offer them so some deals been done somewhere so recommend this one the elad fdm duo recommend the, the perseus in its latest incarnation two brilliant sdrs but they do cost a lot of money so if you're into sdr uh, and you want to save some money then sdr play john hudson and his team solve that problem with this the RSP1A. Now I'm showing you an image of that on the computer screens because John Hudson was kind enough to send me one of these to test um, and post videos uh, using it. Um, he sent me one of these free of charge. I think it was 2017. Um, I think at the time they sold for 120 quid or something. Uh, one kilohertz to two gigahertz. Absolute bargain in terms of performance as a function of price not quite as sensitive as the elad fdm duo but one eighth of the cost for about 95 percent of the performance so the rsp 1a i owned one for a long time used it you there's videos on the channel using it i think now they're like 89 quid and if you need an sdr and you've got a bit less than 100 quid to spend don't hesitate absolutely brilliant sdr and for the price you can't beat it it has inspired many uh, clones. I don't mean clones as in actual copies, but other companies, you know, um, uh, have produced similar SDRs. But kind of the SDR Play RSP1A, I think, was the kind of original low cost but high performing SDR. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I sold mine in the end because I was lucky enough to, to acquire two more of SDR Plays. Uh, receivers and didn't really need it so I sold it on but um, yeah that was a bit a game changer um, not about absolute performance but in terms of super performance at a fraction of the cost of something like an ELAD FDM duo or a, or a, or a, or a Perseus um, so we then come on to SDR Play's next um, product which is these two so you've got the rsp duo which i think came out in 2018 again john hudson was kind enough to send me one of these units and i think i took it on i well, know i took it on more than one trip i can remember using it in houston in texas from a hotel balcony um obviously as the name suggests two separate receivers using two separate antenna inputs um the high z is good up to 30 megahertz and then the 50 ohm inputs up to two gigahertz it has a 10 megahertz spectrum bandwidth it's basic and then you and it's got a reference you can uh an external clock input for connecting to gps reference etc i think it's slightly more sensitive than the rsp 1a um, i haven't actually looked at the numbers uh and i used it willingly and gladly thanks to john hudson and um yeah just a brilliant sdr for traveling slight difference it, they it, it comes in a it came in a, it's a metal case a bit more robust not that there's really anything wrong with the with the plastic case for the rsp1a at the end of the day it's just a black box of electronics but really enjoyed using the rsp duo excellent if you want to compare antennas you know if you've got two antennas if you've got a wire and you've got a mag loop or you've got two mag loops so for example comparing a wellbrook to a bonito antenna jet that kind of thing you can use one target signal and uh, observe the signal you know the uh, the signal from two different antennas in real time using the sdr uno software so um an absolutely brilliant piece of kit which i did use until john hudson contacted me the following year and told me about the sdr play rsp dx um this time you've got one receiver, but it's got a high dynamic uh, range mode, HDR mode, below two megahertz. 
perfect, obviously, for medium wave transatlantic DX. Um, and you've got three antenna inputs this time. You've got the SMA connectors here, A and B, which you probably can't see, but there you go, that are good to um, two gigahertz. And then you've got a BNC connector to make life a bit easier, which is good to 200 megahertz. And um, yeah, absolutely brilliant piece of kit. And in fact, Got it actually set up here. You guys would have seen, some of you guys at least would have seen this before, but that's the SDR Uno software um, that you would, that you use with it. Um, you can, there are other software um, packages that will work, obviously with the RSP DX. I've never bothered to venture beyond um, the official software, and um, I can't remember how much the RSP DX costs. I didn't look it up. All the RSP. Um, uh, duo well, i got a feeling the rsp duo when it first came out was 230 240 quid um and the rsp dx is a bit less than that but you guys can put me right on that um so that's the software and if i'm traveling uh, which obviously haven't been much for the last couple of years because of the pandemic then the rsp dx is the sdr that i take with me so um uh just run it from a laptop i mean the good thing about both the rsp or the rsp um uh receivers from sdr players that they run on usb five volts so for example you can operate those rigs using a usb power brick which is very handy if you're traveling particularly if you're somewhere like for example the jungles of brazil um and you want to go out into the jungle be really stupid and start having a tune around in turn and, and trying to figure out what you can hear so um yeah i think ultimately if you want ultimate performance well uh below two two megahertz the sdr play rspdx the performance sensitivity dynamic range selectivity is as close as makes no difference to the elad ftm duo uh still obviously a fraction of the price um so you can't say fairer than that and yeah just basically completely portable it's a little box usb power um it's the perfect receiver for for, for for traveling um or if you're on a bit of a budget so there you go so that's all of them basically so um i've been fortunate that of the six or so um sdrs that i've actually owned i have three of them i haven't actually had to pay for um uh, so i've been very fortunate in that respect which is my favorite i it's difficult really i think for use at, for use at home because i'm a bit of a, a traditionalist i like the elad fdm duo because i can just use it as a traditional receiver for traveling it's a no-brainer the rsp dx um by a country mile is my favorite sdi in terms of overall performance probably the micro telecom perseus which i don't have with me anymore but you guys can either look that up or a lot of you will be aware of it um and i think that sdr obviously is here to stay um i probably overall still not prefer to use a traditional receiver with a front panel um i enjoy do doing both um there's just something special about the elad in terms of adjusting a front panel and watching the frequency change on the computer screen it's that kind of stuff it's the flexibility of having an sdr that also operates as a sort of traditional radio but um, i'm a big fan of sdr um and it's here to stay so it makes sense to be a big fan of sdr uh, i don't think it's going anywhere um and um I, j I hope that was useful at the end of the day this is a this does, this video does, didn't take so long because whilst whilst i've got about 30 portables to talk about i've only owned a few sdrs but all i can say is you're probably better off buying an rsp 1a for 90 quid um and you than you are going out buying a, a portable radio for similar money you you know because you're probably going to get more performance particularly in terms of signal processing you know almost infinite sort of well, signal filtering options whether it's setting the audio bandwidth or, or whatever it might be um uh, demodulation modes you know it, it, you know it'll have everything so um so that's my view and um I, I hope that even if it doesn't inspire anybody to go out and buy an sdr 
Um, I think at least, hopefully, you know, some of you guys um, will who don't have so much experience with them can kind of understand why 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 certain um, factions of the uh, of our hobby love them. Other people sort of don't ideologically opposed to them um but um i yeah i, I just think that uh, being able to observe the signal as you're listening to it is so useful particularly when you're trying to sort of copy a a, a, a weak station you know you it's so much easier to um to have a look at where the noise floor is how much modulation you've got setting the audio bandwidth filter you know have you got um adjacent noise you know do you need to switch from you know lower sideband to upper sideband you know because you've got um qrm bleeding in you know on, uh, you know on one side of the signal it's that kind of thing that just makes dxing so much easier notwithstanding of course you know the, all these software packages have the option now of recording an entire um spec ba spectrum um and to, to be analyzed later on so uh so yeah um it, they're all they're all really good best value for money is SDR play by by a country mile for me absolutely superb performance as a function of price if you want ultimate performance and you like to fiddle with the controls then it's the little red box there above my icon icr 75 that would be my take on the whole thing anyway i hope that was useful interesting um obviously drop your comments uh uh on the uh, on the channel and i'll get around uh slowly to uh replying to all of them so anyway that's about it i wish you all the best 73 from the shack enjoy the rest of the summer cheers <laughs>